Thank you. Again, thank you so much. My name is Ade Busui Olutai Olumadewa from Do The Dream Youth Development Initiative, an organization that helps youth to find their voice and create a platform for the voices to be amplified. We are a strategic partner of United Nations Nigeria, and we are glad to be hosting again the World Food Day today. It's going to be an awesome event. Why? Because we're being joined by people from Singapore and from different places. So on behalf of Director General of Food and Agriculture Organization of United Nations and the FAO representative Nigeria, I'm talking about Fred Cafero and the Honorable Minister of Agriculture, Dr. Mohamed Abubakar, I welcome you all to this wonderful event. I invite this first speaker today, an agri-tech consultant, Mr. Shola Oyawale online. Thank you. Over to you, Mr. Oyawale, if you can hear me. Yes, um, I can hear you, Tyre. Thank you very much. Um, a big well done to the Do The Dream um, team and um, all protocols um, duly observed um, from the Federal Ministry of um, Agriculture, um, from FAO um, and other dignitaries and, and more importantly, other participants on this call. Um, you know, the World Food Day um, is an opportunity for us to be reminded um, that the one thing required, um, you know, for every human being, um, you know, to continue to stay alive, um, develop, um, you know, physically and mentally, and, you know, that, like we all know, um, is good food, um, you know. Um, food with the right um, nutrition that either help um, you know the young um, ones develop um, appropriately, or um, you know in terms of um, adults you know to keep us going um, as it were. Um, and, and the one for this year particularly you know strikes um, a nerve because um, everyone who resides in Nigeria today uh, would understand. Um, that the price of food, especially inflation, you know, on food, um, has been on the rise increasingly um, over the last 14 months, you know, or so. Uh, but I feel it's become, you know, um, deeper um, in the second and the third quarter of this year, and um, you know, all the facts and figures um, show. But I, I feel there is some respite um, because some early reports for September shows that um, the rate of, um, you know, the rate of, um, you know, um, that adverse situation is now being stemmed um, as it were. Uh, but I felt it would be, you know, a very good opportunity today um, to talk about one of the things I believe um, can threaten, um, you know, food security. Um, for a country like ours, Nigeria. What we have currently now is food is available, uh, but it is quite expensive. And you'd almost want to wonder what would be the fate um, of those who live below the poverty line? Um, how, do they, how do they cope? But even over and above the poverty line, you find out that we also have um, the, the middle class income earning Nigerians who now grapple with the difficulty um, you know, in accessing food. Um, suffice to say, some of the challenges um, that have plagued food production in Nigeria over the last um, two years, um, past one year has probably been um, the pandemic um, and the fact that the majority of farmers have been unable um, to cultivate as much as they should um, for issues bordering around the lockdowns um, and which has led you know, or sorry, which led at that time, you know, to a lot of food loss and waste, um, food loss, you know, at the level of the farming because um, they were unable um, to probably um, tend um, to their crops appropriately uh, because of lockdowns or were unable to harvest adequately. And even when they got over that challenge, um, you know, the, the, the logistics of moving it around town you know, um, with the lockdowns was also a bit difficult. Um, so um, I'd like to speak briefly, you know, around 
um, reducing food loss um, and waste. Um, I see that as, I mean, that means if we're not even able to produce more, um, you know, at the level where it's required, can we, at least as a country, try as much as, much as possible to then retain as much, you know, as possible from production. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've reviewed quite a number of documents from Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN um, around this subject of food loss and waste. And um, in my capacity as one who works in, you know, um, the agri sector, particularly driving agriculture with the use of technology in you know, over the past four years, uh, we've participated in hands-on solutions um, to then continue to help um, stem the tide of food loss, you know, and 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 waste. The world, as we see today, based on the resources it has, um, has the capability, um, you know, to feed, um, you know, everyone on a healthy diet. I mean, there are two things here: eating healthy diets. I mean, two different things. But then, you know, I dare say the world as we have it today is capable. Uh, but then I think um, the deployment of resources in the right capacity might be the challenge um, um, we might be having. Um, some of the SDG goals, um, you know, speak um, adequately, you know, to some of these challenges, uh, you know, being faced as it relates to um, poverty and inequality, as it relates to hunger, um, as it relates to, you know, food systems under stress and malnourishment, um, you know, all of these, you know, are being uh, linked to, um, you know, that SDG goal around zero hunger. And um, food loss, you know, like I, like I mentioned um, earlier, uh, these, are, these are things that happen, you know, before harvest, during harvest, um, you know, some post-harvest um, operations, um, and, you know, at the time of storage or distribution, or at the points of processing and packaging, you know, um, I'm making a firm statement to say if um, food, you know, waste or sorry, food loss can be can be reduced at these levels, um, you know, we can have some additions, you know, to the net um, production um, that Nigeria is boasting of at the moment, and 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 my my assumption also is. Um, if we're able to do more, we can buy, sorry, if we're able to save more food, um, we can then, you know, buy some time to then make up for the gap we have in food um, production. Um, on the food waste side, um, everything that happens from the sale of food on the retail end um, or the public and household consumption, uh, you find out that there are still households that have enough to feed on and, you know, they are unable to finish their food and then, you know, it goes into the waste bin um, as well. Some of these factors, um, you know, are you know great contributors to food loss and waste. You know, as as it were. Um, for for a nation like Nigeria, we will need to do a lot more. Um, you can take inferences from other countries who um, are doing probably a lot more in terms of food production. But for Nigeria particularly, um, um, we're on the back heel. Um, as it were, and you know, we need to do a lot more um, if we must achieve, you know, sustainability in food security as a nation. Um, you know, we must start paying attention to the environment. Um, we must start, you know, paying attention to, you know, um, you know, um, economic um, impacts of some of these decisions, um, and then more importantly, you know, everything that undermines food security. Uh, we must start paying huge, huge attention um, to them. Um, you know, the SDG Goal 12, um, you know, speaks about um, trying by 2030 um, to reduce by half, you know, the per capita global food waste, you know, at the retail and consumer levels and reduce food losses, you know, uh, from production and supply chains, um, including post-harvest, um, losses. So this, this is what I would want to promote um, on this platform today, responsible consumption and production. Um, I feel there's a lot more we can do if we're unable to increase our production astronomically. I believe as a nation, um, if we're able to achieve uh, the SDG 12 goal, um, you know, which is responsible consumption and production, 
I believe to a large extent would have made some huge and immense contribution um, you know, to food security as a nation. Um, I, I feel if we achieve this goal, a few things will happen. Um, it will contribute more to the economy, um, would have some improved productivity, you know, and economic growth um, in that regard. Um, you know, we will also be able to boast of food security um, as a nation, we'll be able to say as a nation, we are sufficient by ourselves um, to be able to feed um, the humans, um, you know, of this, of this country called um, Nigeria. So I feel we need to pay attention uh, to some of the harrowing issues around, um, you know, be a lot being planted and, you know, and then less is being harvested, you know, and then in other cases where you have a lot being harvested and not that same quantity gets to the market. Um, and then when you find more getting to the market and um, between the market and the final consumption, you know, so all of that loss, and all of that waste, um, I feel on an occasion as this, um, which is celebrating, um, um, you know, World Food Day, as it were, um, we should start paying more attention um, to this. I know the federal government and other food agencies and a few private um, players are doing a lot in this space. Um, obviously, a lot of data is being collected, you know, um, to probably gauge how much food loss and waste are we dealing with? And then along, you know, what types of food, um, you know, gets wasted, um, you know, the most um, in what regions of the country. And, you know, some Naira and Kobo, uh, you know, valuation, you know, is also being tied um, to that. And then the primary drivers for this loss are being, um, you know, um, analyzed um, to see how, um, you know, they can be, um, you know, they can be, they can be adjusted, um, you know, as it were. Um, so on a day like this, you know, irrespective of, um, you know, where you're playing, whether you're playing, you know, from a government agency, um, playing from, you know, a private capacity, or playing from even as a, con as a consumer, um, uh, you know, I like to say, pay more attention, you know, to everything, um, you know, that adds to, um, you know, food loss, and waste. Uh, one of the way uh, we can also get out, you know, of this as quickly as possible, um, is to digitize the last mile. And like I said, having operated um, in uh, the food space for the last um, four years, um, I would say part of the solutions we built um, for the market um, is, you know, solutions around traceability, but largely around the last mile digitization. Um, you have many smallholder farmers in Nigeria today um, who are producing a lot. Uh, you find out the basic issue is half the time. Some don't even have, you know, um, the capital to transport what they've produced to the market. Um, you find out that some of the logistics providers are also not efficient in the sense that someone has agreed, oh, uh, market day is Tuesday, for example. We need to start this journey on Sunday because of the distance of my farm to the market. Uh, you find out that the logistics partner only arrives on Monday. And then probably when he arrives on Monday, you also suffer uh, some breakdown you know, um, of that same vehicle and are unable to get to the market on the market day. They probably get to the market on a Wednesday, for example. And I'm speaking from you know, some live experiences that I've had. On Wednesday, it's not a market day. So that farmer is only simply going to park somewhere, having lost some of this produce on the way, is going to sell whatever is left, you know, for as little as possible. And then would we'll continue to wonder why farmers, you know, remain poor um, as it were. But, you know, part of digitizing that last mile and part of the things we've done, um, you know, which I believe, you know, would we'll see more of um, in our country through, um, you know, the involvement of, you um, organizations like, um, you know, FAO, the Federal Ministry of Agriculture, is how we digitize the last mile. Because I believe if that farmer, and which is some of the things we've done, we created some aggregation centers around the country. If that farmer has to travel only just one to three kilometers to get to an aggregation center close to him, um, where, you know, this last mile digitization company can buy off that produce from the farmer, 
and you see it cuts off all of that challenge of the farmer trying to get to the market. Uh, so access to market is guaranteed um, in this regard. And once that is done, uh, you find out that on a digital platform, um, it is possible to trace where each you know, and every bag um, you know, of this produce has come from. And by inference, um, the process of uh, wood might probably be in a large city, can get on that platform as well, and then see that there's a million metric tons of maize that have been aggregated in the Cardona, for example. They can place an order, buy off, deploy you know, the trucks um, that will move them you know, from the urban center, as I'm sorry, from the rural centers um, you know, into the cities to aid their production. Um, we've seen how last mile um, digitization can also contribute um, to reducing you know, food loss and waste. Um, lastly, for me, this morning will be the off-farm economy um, because there is an economy outside of the farm. You know, all of the production that happens on the farm is great, uh, but I feel one of the lessons that the pandemic has taught us, you know, in this side of the world is why we pay a lot of attention to the production um, on the farms. Uh, we should also now start to sensitize um, farmers on off-farm um, economy, the off-farm economy. And what that simply means is all of those activities that is possible um, to a farmer outside of his farm land, um, probably um, the sale of commodities, um, you know, the resale of the input, you know, for, for planting uh, during, uh, you know, the seasons, um, probably uh, the creation of a food um, hub um, where food can be made and then resold um, as it were. I mean, the off-farm economy is also huge and has deep potential um, to continue to support, uh, you know, the economy of the smallholder farmers um, in Nigeria. One thing the pandemic you know, opened our eyes to is the fact that while the farmer could not get on his farm, if he had been um, educated about the off-farm economy and had taken up a few um, activities in that regard, um, the majority of them you know, might have been able to continue to sustain um, their livelihoods as it were. Uh, so on commemorating you know, the World Food Day, um, a big congratulations to Do The Dream. Again, um, I feel um, for us to attain food security as a nation and to you know, also achieve you know, um, that SDG goal 12 of responsible consumption and production, um, we cannot continue, sorry, we cannot continue, we cannot afford you know, um, to keep anyone in the dark about the realities around food loss and waste, whether the ones that happen you know, um, on the farm, the one that happens in transit between the farm and the consumer, or the one that happens even within the domain of the consumer themselves, uh, which is throwing food, um, you know, um, that is left over away. Um, I, I hope um, with this few, um, you know, points I've shared, I've been able to shed some light on what it would take us as a nation um, to achieve food um, security. Um, and at this point, I'd like to say thank you for having me. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Shola. Yeah, Wale, that's a brilliant presentation from you. One of the key highlights is this. We cannot keep people in the dark. Um, SDG goals were responsible production and consumption. It's time for all of us to get on board and get things done. Thank you, sir, for this that wonderful presentation. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. So we'll go directly to um, Killer British International. We'll go directly to Killer British International to see some of their great works. Mr. Oyawale, before you leave now, I would like to, to see this before you take your leave. Thank you. Over to you, Caleb British International. These are some of the exploit of great guys in this part of the world, how they are making agriculture unique, how they are building strong interest in agriculture. Over to you, Caleb British International. The floor is yours now. Thank you.
Good everyone. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you. Thank you. Good day, everyone. I am Tosha Oseni, a student from Kilev International School. And today, here with me, our TV Dennis Show, and Sarah Fatadi. Today, we'll be talking about the local action we took in our school to promote interest in agriculture called STEM Farm. Agriculture contributes many more parts of, of global greenhouse gas emissions. This is 7 percent of land, including in Antarctica, and accounts for 70 percent of all fresh water which is drawn from lakes, rivers, and aquifers. As a result of these sad realities, we student members of Young Entrepreneurs Club in Television International School, like you, have worked on a project called STEM Farm. STEM Farm is a hydroponic farm that uses only water and substrates without soil usage. We do world's population now at some point to young people, and then we are still finding it difficult to obtain food security. How exactly that by 2050, when the world's population will be at 9.8 billion people, or by 20 or by 2100, when the population will be at one at 11 billion, how exactly are we sure that we'll be able to meet the calorie needs and feed the people by that time? Now, at our school, we developed a system called STEM farms, which is an hydroponic system of farming that uses substrates as a representative of soil to grow our crops. Please work with me as we take a look at our farms. Now, our STEM farm consists of a tent, pipes, a trough, and this is what we call our uh, substrate, which is a representative of the soil. Now, in, a, every, in every three days, we fill this tank with 70 liters of water, which means by, at the end of this tank, it's with 210, 210 liters of water. Now, you can see these pipes connected from the tank as well as connected through pipes to the troughs. Now, these troughs transport both mineral nutrients as well as water. Now, underneath the substrate, um, between, between the troughs, there's something called an RDI team, which means responsive, responsive drip irrigation team, which allows, which releases water and releases nutrients when it feels that the plants need, when it feels that the plants need water, when it feels that the plants need nutrients. The farm contains 100 heads of different farm produce, standing on 2.4 square meters of land space. On 6th of October, the farm was exactly three months, and they have used up 2,520 liters of water for irrigation. This water usage is minimal compared to the water usage for irrigation on traditional farming. With this idea, we are helping in preserving critical elements in our ecosystem, water and plants life in the rainforest. We are also using this project as a campaign for millions of youth all over the world to embrace modern system of farming because it is simple, easy, and innovative. Our advocacy is for people to plant what you eat and eat what you plant. Apart from advocacy, we are also learning enterprise, collaboration and communication, critical thinking and problem solving skills. As, I work, as we are working towards solving SDG2 or contributing to help solving SDG2, zero hunger, we're also looking at SDG2, which has been responsible Food and production, as well as the decent work and economic growth. Now, it's an obvious fact that farming in Nigeria, farming in Africa, has been stereotyped as a brown collar job, meaning that if you are going into agricultural farming, you are going to traditional farming, then they are going there because of lack of opportunities. Now, our hydroponic system of farming has now reinvented agriculture, reimagined agriculture, made agriculture now feel like making agriculture now a modern job, making it, making it a white collar job. Now, I and my teammates are on our farm with our ties, with our blazers, with good shoes, and working on our farm without getting our hands, without getting our hands dirty. Now, as well as we have the trough system here, we also have another system of hydroponics here, which in which we don't use any troughs. The substrates are laid inside these black bags, and you can see the growth of them already. The growth of them already. These are also its, it's um, pipes, which also be the use of the nutrients and the water. Now, also here, if you can see our our food. Now, fun, fun facts, this, all the foods, all the plants grown here are purely organic. So you eating this or you taking this, you don't have any risk of saying that you're going to get any of this, any of it. As Elia said, my team, my, one of my teammates made mention that the plants, the 
plant the stem farm has been in excess for the past few months. Now, I know you're probably wondering, okay, what are these plants? So these plants are, are, are brought to prevent the, the plants from, uh, from falling. So it helps to keep the plant um, upright. So you can see. And also, here is like to help, you know, climate really has no effect on, climate effect on our, on our system of farming is not as high as compared to traditional farming. So now we use this trend, this tent up here to control the amount of rainfall and sunlight that our plant um, receives to prevent adverse, adverse effects. So now the goals. So now we are trying to take this step to advocate for people to join our advocacy that we should eat what we plant as well as we should plant what, as well as we plant what we eat. So now this system can be at the back of your house, can be at your community center, can be in your school, can be in your workplace. Because this, with this now, we're now reimagining agriculture, making agriculture, making a, make, bringing a new dimension to agriculture and making young people like us passionate in agriculture. Now we see our cash time. It was just plant what you eat and what you want to do. Plant what you eat and it was plant. But students from Kilev is international school. Thank you very much. Awesome. awesome. Brilliant one from Caleb University, Caleb um, Secondary School. Awesome one. Thank you, Caleb. Thank you, Caleb, for that beautiful presentation. Eat what you plant, plant what you eat. Thank you from Caleb Junior School. And I go to Ojodu Junior Grammar School now. We need to see you and your farm. What do you have for us, Ojodu Junior Grammar School? What do you yeah, have? You can mute yourself. After this, we're going to be having David Elishin's presentation. I hope you set. Ojodu Junior Grammar School, what do you have for us? We're waiting for you. Thank you if we are, if you can hear. Ojodu Junior Grammar School, are you set for us? Are you set? Okay. You can you need to unmute yourself so we can hear you. Okay, you can mute unmute yourself. Sorry. For us to plant. For us to no yes. 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 Good day. Good day, sir. Good day, sir. My name is Amawe Orezimena Esther. And today we are here to enlighten you on how to plant maize. On how to plant maize. And here we have a maize farm. And for us to plant this, we went through several, we went through three processes, which is the pre-planting, planting and post-planting. The pre-planting, planting and post-planting. On, on pre-planting operation, pre-planting operation are the activities carried out before planting. And that those are site selection, site selection, selection of fertile land for plant for farming. Before planting these, we we selected we we selected a fertile land for planting, and this is it. And after that, we selected the seed selection, seed selection. That is the selection of viable seeds. Viable seeds and corn is a viable seed because it grows easily. That is the selection. Or Bible seeds. Then after that, we and that, sure. the, that is the divide division of land for various farming, for farming activities. And we also add from that is the removal of roots of natural trees. The removal of roots of natural trees. And after that, we have soil. The turning of the topsoil for easy planting, and for us to for us to plow, we have to make use of the plow. That is that is an equipment used for plowing, and we also have the arrowing. 
We also have the arrowing. That is the slicing or breaking of the subsoil, plowed in or into pieces by arrow. That is the that is the slicing or breaking of topsoil for us to be able to plant. And we also have the rigging. The rigging. We also have the rigging. Yeah, of beds for better planting of crops by making use of the region. That is the region making use that we made use of the region in order to in order to reach this land, and that we made use of the region for making it of beds for the for the crops for the maize crops. And we also have the planting operation. That is the planting operation. These are the activities carried out while planting. The activities carried out while planting, and these are the seed rate. For us to be able to plant this maize, we decide, we decide the seed rate. That's the amount of seed. And we also have the spacing. And if, as you can see here, you see that the maizes are not joined together. There are spaces between them. There are spaces between them. That's what we call the spacing. The distance between one to another, the depth. And we also have the sowing depth. The sowing depth. That this is the depth in which the seed are going to be placed, in which the seed are going to be placed. And our third one is post planting, post planting operation. And this includes the weeding, the weeding of unwanted plants, the weeding of unwanted plants. You can weed with ants. You can we eat with our ants yes, and we eat with other farm, farm animals. My, like like my fellow here now, you can see that she's weeding, she's weeding the the land. She's weeding the land. The unwanted grasses. And we also have the fertilizer and application and manuring. Fertilizer application and manuring. For this plant to be able to grow, we are we use fertilizer. We add we apply we apply fertilizer to the plants, and we also have watering. If you don't water your plants, your plants will die. So, and for all this maize to grow like this, we watered it. We watered it every day. And after after we after we watered it, you can see that some of it already they've harvested already. Some of it has developed. They've developed. They've developed plants. And that is what they call. Now we are want to harvest it. We want to harvest it. You can see here that for us in this post planting, for this post planting, we are. Having Harvesting our maize. Yeah, have I studied? We have after harvesting, it leads to processing. You can see that from that processing, you have to remove the maize from the from the tree, remove it from the cover. Then after you can use it in making different kinds of different kinds of series. You can use making series for teas. You can use it for paps, and that's what we call harvesting. And we also have the story. After now that we've harvested, we now that we've harvested our maize. Now we are going to store it. We are going to store oh. our maize. We are going to market it. Thank you for listening. And we are the children of Ojo Junior Grammar School, Lagos, Nigeria. Thank As you, you listen, may you be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bye bye. Thank you, thank everybody. Thank you. Wow, 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 wow. Um, if I may bring in um Shola Yawale to just comment on what you just seen just now, sir. Yes. Look at some of the key things you've just seen. Wow, that's a brilliant presentation from Ujudu Junior Grammar School. Can I go? Mr. Yawale, are you here, yes, sir? Mr. Yawale, are you with us? Can you hear me, Mr. Yawale? You are done with us. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yes, yes, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Just for you to just advise. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Just stay around. We still have some words for you. Okay, okay sir. Right. Yeah, I mean, for the presentations from Caleb and from okay, Olivia, sir. a big thank well you, done, sir. big well sir. done um, um, to you. Um, youth participation in agriculture cannot be overemphasized. Um, part of the challenges, you know, on the operational side that we have found is that in working with smallholder farmers um, in the interlands is 
the majority of the farmers we get to work with are older. And what um, the young people would want to say is that, look, farming is not interesting, it is not fun. But look, um, the testament to the fact that it's possible is what we have here um, from the kids from Caleb and from Ojodu. It's, it's big. I'd like to tell you, look, um, farmers are billionaires. That's what it really is. But over and above making money from agriculture, you will have the satisfaction of the fact that you are responsible for feeding a nation. And that's that sort of satisfaction. Um, you can money can't even give it to you. So please, I'd like to encourage um, as you as your passion, as you had a passion for agriculture, continue to study. There are several areas of agriculture. I'm driving agriculture using technology today. You also can invent what has never been done before. Um, but in all you do, ensure. Um, you know, you plug into reputable organizations for your source of information and, you know, for also executing some of the projects you have. I know you're still studying, continue to study, study wide, uh, but when you ever have that opportunity, um, you know, to choose to be part of this ecosystem called agriculture, agribusiness, um, don't think about it twice. Um, it is viable. It holds the future for our nation today. And I, like I said, I mean, farmers are billionaires, really, because the, the satisfaction you will derive from knowing um, that what you plant is what you eat, or the fact that you're also responsible for helping others feed um, cannot be bought with money. So I'd like to say a big um, well done um, to, to students from both schools, well done, and to their teachers, and they are mentors um, who have started to show them this path early on. Um, a big well done and to the schools um, that are, you know, and that are encouraging, um, you know, um, agriculture and showing these young ones the way. A big well done um, to you as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. So we go to Caleb now. David Yelashin, are you ready for your presentation? David, David um, Elishin, sorry, if we are not speaking, kindly mute yourself. Thank you. David Elishin, are you ready for your presentation? Don't go. Stay there, I'm coming. David Elishin, are you ready for your presentation? I'd like to recognize the presence of Sakmitri Jaffa. Thank you. I can see you. In a few minutes now, we'll be having the FAO country director here now, in terms of Mr. Fred Caffero. David Elish, are you me? ready? Okay. David Elish. So could you give me two minutes? Two minutes. Two you minutes. You do not have two minutes, David. So beautiful presentation from um caleb caleb gave us eat what you plant plant what you eat that's a wonderful one for caleb from ojodu junior grammar school that's a beautiful one the process from the weeding to the food turn to the planting to the harvest great one and we thank your teachers so we're going to be taking another one from Agidingu, but that will be after wonderful presentation from David Elishin before the FAO country director definitely gives us the wonderful presentation. Then after that run time, we'll definitely come in. Thank you. David, are you set now? David, are you set now? Okay, seems it's not set ready. Can we go to oh want to recognize the presence of Rontan? Want to recognize the presence of Rontan on this call? Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So Eat what you plant, plant what you. That's the word from Caleb British International telling us how you can practice agriculture in a modern way. And Mr. Shola Yawali has actually inspired us to see the beauty of modern agriculture. 
letting us know that agriculturists, you can be a billionaire with agriculture. And not even about the finance or the money, but about the blessing that you are the one feeding the nation. That's a beautiful one that you've got to run with. So are you set, David Eleshin? Okay, we have to move to Agidingby Junior Grammar School. Agidingby Junior Grammar School, are you ready for your presentation as well? Good morning, sir. We are ready. Okay, go ahead. The floor is yours. This is Sunday Victoria from Agidingby Junior Grammar School. And Where here with your Hello, your video. Hello, sir. Hello, Where Hello, are you? Sir. We can you. Plan. Okay. The your, video, last your video is off. Our video. Where are you? Yes, sir. Okay. He's all right. We can see you now. Thank you. Here we are. I'm my fellow student from Agile Virginia Grammar School. So right now we are on the farmland. We've harvested the last time we showed you on sorry maize, which we have harvested. And we have cleared the land and for another planting season. Right now we have vegetables which we have planted and our cassava, which is not yet mature enough for harvest, which we didn't harvest from the last time. You can see it. Hello. Can you see the cassava, sir? So that's our cassava. And this is on our vegetable farm. Here we have planted that's ugu. Without fertilizer, you can see free from chemical, just natural, ready to eat. So this is our vegetable farm. We have cleared the land, stomping, made ridges, wet the land. So this is okra growing. And we do come here to the farm to remove the unwanted weeds. Here you have them on our ridges. You can see. You can see it. Our okra. From here, this is the farm. So very soon, we hope to harvest it very soon, child, because there is enough rain, enough water supply for it, which we think will make it grow faster. Because we do not add any chemical, any fertilizer. So it's natural, fresh, free, and it's the best to eat, especially. So here we are moving to another section of our school farmland where we have students working on the farmland. They are working on the farmland. As you can see, they are making ridges. You can see them. You can see them making ridges. You can see them on the farmland working. You can see them. They are making the ridges right now. You can see they are on the farmland working, making ridges. Everyone, both the boys, the girls, everybody is in action working so that we can have the plants. Here you have the teacher. So after the ridges, then. We make our seed selection, then we start planting. You can see the teacher with them right now. They are making the ridges. So after the ridges, we plant, we wet. You can see, you can see them. You can see them working on the farmland. You can see even the girls. Even the girls are working. You can see them working on the farmland. Here we have the boys, another set of students, and our teacher on the farmland also coordinating them, making sure that they make it in the right making sure that they make it in the right way, making the ridges. You can see her, you can see the students. Those ones are the ridges that they've already made. These ones are the ones that they are just yet to do. And the teacher coordinating them. So after the ridges, the next thing now is we plant. So from planting, we wet. This is the rainy season, so we don't have much to wet. The rain will be wet soon. Then very soon we make another harvest and they clear the land for another planting season. Here with me is our school principal, Mr. Alon Michael. We are on the farmland, everybody with the students and our fellow students that are working is our teacher. Thank you for staying with us. Thank you for inviting us over to be part of the participants of the program. We say thank you very much to each and every sponsor, each and every person behind it. Say thank you. We sincerely appreciate. Thank you very much. Thank for you very us. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so you've got to hold on. You didn't tell us the processes. Now, last time you told us the processes in which you encounter. So today you're going to tell us some of the processes as well. Right. 
land. After clearing the land for the crop, crop, which we use the whole and, and the cutlass, as the students are doing right now, to clear the land. After clearing the land, we use the hole to make the ridges. After the ridges, we wet the land. Then we selected the roots, selected the unwanted um, seed from the okra. After selecting it, then we choose choice of seed, how many to put in each place. We put it inside water. Then the one that floats to the top is not good. The one on the island, that is the very planting, which we planted. And after planting it, that is the one we have that's growing, which is the traditional way of farming that is the very best without fertilizer, it's very pure and chemical, very, very good to eat fresh. So like that, as it's growing, the rain is wetting it every day, it continues to grow. Before you know, just like the last one that we showed that was tall with okra on it, that's how it will come out then. We harvest seed per hole. So we made it to seed per hole. You can see they are still making ridges for the next vegetable farm. We to use part of it for the vegetable and part of it for another maize because we've harvested the last maize which we should get. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Awesome presentation from you. Give yourself a round of applause. I look. So, what's your slogan today? You didn't tell us about your slogan. You used it was a slogan. So again, no food, no man. No food, no man. Yeah. No, you know, the last time you told us no crop, no man. Yeah, so this time we say no food, no man. No food, no. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We appreciate what you guys been doing. It's been awesome, 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 awesome. From Agidingri Junior Grammar School. Thank you. Now move ahead now. That... Thanks for having us. Okay. Um, can you give it to one of your colleagues as well to just um, tell us so that it will look as if you are the only one that knows more about the agri process, agricultural process in your, in your school? Is there any other student who can share some of the processes, the food system uh, processes as well? Okay, so please hold on. Yes, I have the students. are very beautiful. Imagine even girls are very hardworking. I work on the farm because they are all satisfied. We are making ridges right now. After the ridges, we plant the vegetables. Then the next, the next level will come up. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, sir. I can hear you. Thank you so much. Yes, I didn't get that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, we got her. We got her. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Let me hear from one of the students working on the farm. And what are your plans for in life? So, Let's get the students so who likes to talk to Who can talk? Okay, thank you so much. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Okay, she can't hear you, sir. Please hold on. Let me increase the volume. Okay, can you hear him now? Oh, yeah, we talk. So after we finish left doing the ridges, we are going to level it. After leveling it, we plant seeds. After planting seeds, we wet it. We continue going there, removing the weeds so that they can grow easily. After they have grown, after they have grown, we watch them as they are growing, as they are going. If there is any fruit, we go there, we adjust it. After we adjust it, then when it's at harvest, we can sell it to the teachers and make our own profits. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Agni, the junior grammar. Practice it and advance and sell to the society and sell foods to the society so that our community and society will develop. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, so what's your beautiful interest in agriculture? Are you willing to do agriculture in life? Okay. Thank you. 
Thank you. So Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Akidingwe Junior Grammar School. We're so grateful. We're still coming back to you as we go straight to um, British Caleb British International, where we have David Eleshin. David Eleshin, can you hear me? Are you set for your presentation, David Eleshin? Yes, sir, I am. Okay, thank you so much. The floor is yours now. You have the floor. Let us know the interest you have in agriculture and how you are willing to inspire thousands all over the world to do dream agriculture in your generation. Over to you, Mr. David Eleshin. You have eight minutes. Thank you. Um, should I share, can I share my screen? Go ahead. It says host disabled participant screen share. Screen sharing is disabled. Oh. Okay, so it's, it's working now. Okay. Good everyone, my name is David Alessian, and today I'm here to present on building interest in agriculture. First of all, I would really like to dissect each topic, each word in this topic. The key word in this sentence is agriculture, and I'm sure we've all heard of it before. In simple terms, agriculture, In simple terms, agriculture is the practice of. Right. Wow. Oh, it seems we, well, it seems we, uh, there's a technical issue from Caleb University, um, Caleb Group of Schools. Thank you so much. We have to move to the next thing now. Um, David Deleshi, can you hear me? Okay, thank you so much. We have to move all right on time. Um, I would like to recognize the presence of Mr. Fred Cafero. Mr. Fred Cafero is the F Food and Agriculture Organization representative, uh, FAO Nigeria representative. Over to you, sir. Good afternoon. Oh, sorry, good morning. Good morning, good morning. I hope you can hear me well. It's a pleasure also to be with you. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you so much. It's been all an honor to have you online again. We have a lot of young people from 13 schools on call now, sitting different and um, different. Some are presenting from farms. Some are presenting from their hall. Some just finished a mechanized, a modern agriculture from Caleb British School. They told us that eat what you plant, plant what you eat. Beautiful presentation, which I'm going to send to you again. I would love you to see that presentation online again. But before that, I would like David Ellis yes, to present as uh, to have this presentation. So I'm here. Thank you. Maybe Why you come up? Okay, David. Go to... Okay. So Can you proceed? Start. Can you proceed now? Yeah, just very, very quickly. No, 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 no. Oh, you have to be fast. We have FA country rep already online. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. I do junior grammar school. Thank you for that wonderful presentation. I, I look forward to come to your firm and see some of those beautiful, you beautiful things you've done. 
Also, Agidingbe, thank you for that. So many wonderful things that I found that's telling us no food, no man, no food, no man. Thank you. And also to that awesome presentation from Caleb British School. Thank you so much. Are you set, David? Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is David Anderson. But today, I'm here to present on building interest in the report. I'm waiting for my slides to come up by hand. I can proceed. So, so can you see my slide? I've not seen your slide. You can see them. No. So, you can see your slide. So can you see it? No. Okay, let me go ahead with that. Okay, go ahead so, and put on your video. You my video. Yes. Okay, so. I would really like for us to dissect each word individually in this sentence. The key word in this sentence is agriculture. And I'm sure, and I'm sure we've all heard of it. And I'm sure we've all heard of the word before. In, in a short definition, agriculture is the practice of cultivating plants and livestock. It may this is much more complex than we think. For example, Agriculture was the key development in the rise of sedentary human civilization. Now, on to building interest. Sorry, when I say, your, when I, your visuals, your visuals. Your video, we can't see you. I'm having technical difficulties. Okay. So um, is it okay for me to carry on without to carry on without my video? No, no, no. So, um, communicate. It's okay. You can proceed. Proceed. Okay, sir. So, when I say building, building is the act of developing something or increasing a certain aspect of something. When I say I want to build something, it means I'm trying to take that into higher levels than before. Now, interest. Interest is the feeling of wanting to know more about something or someone. If I'm interested in a particular subject, it just means that I want to devote my attention and time to it. And when you couple them together, building interest is taking your passion for something to greater height. If you've heard about agriculture before, I'm sure you think it's a brown collar job. It's something that is not fit for the rich people or people of higher classes. But I want to tell you today that that is not so. In this day and age, there are several things that have made agriculture a white collar job. Now, moving on to the gold mine in the sentence. A gold mine in this case can be seen as a source of wealth, valuable information, or resources. We all know how valuable gold is. If I was given a bar of gold today, I would most likely sell it for a very profitable amount. So the term gold mine means a source of great value, something that is near replaceable. Agriculture is near replaceable. In the next 10 years, the world will become a world of agriculture, a world in which agriculture would have moved into great heights. So why should you build interest in agriculture? I'm sure not everybody has the necessary skills to become a doctor or a programmer, a coder, somebody, a scientist, but agriculture is very basic. You can start off with very basic knowledge. A, a very good example of that is what we have done in Caleb British International School. We created this, um, something called a STEM farm. That was the name of the project, a hydroponic farm that only uses water and substrates without school usage. We started off with just a bit of knowledge about the hydroponic farm. And now you can see where we're at. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, David. Awesome presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. If you can get me, Mr. Uyemi, I would like us to see the STEM farm again, if it's possible. And over to you, sir, Mr. Fred Cafero, FAO, Food Agriculture Organizations of Nigeria, of United Nations, Nigeria representative. Over to you, sir. Good morning to you. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good, good, good morning. Good morning. It's a pleasure to, to be with you. Uh, would you like me to continue with the remarks? Go ahead, sir. Go ahead, sir. Okay, fantastic. So, uh, again, once again, good morning. Um, I'm, I'm reaching out to you from this beautiful town of Yola. I just arrived this morning in Yola. Wow. wow. Uh, but let me add. First and foremost, convey uh, the warm greetings and a message of congratulations uh, to do the DREAM Youth Development Initiative coming from the FAO Director General, Dr. Q Dongyu, uh, on this excellent work that you are doing and the noble cause of mobilizing young men and young women on the continent of Africa to focus and tap into big opportunities that uh, agriculture presents uh, to them. Uh, he received your invitation to be part of the conference, uh, but of course, uh, the exigence of duties would not allow. So I stand in for him and make these remarks. Your conference is coming on the heels of last month's UN Food Systems Summit, which I believe you all know about. Now that systems summit mapped out the broad outlines of how the entire world needs to move forward in transforming agriculture systems. It highlighted the prominent role of young generation to take us to the future that we all desire. Additionally, the call for action has resonated very well in all the activities that we have completed last week as we marked the World Food Day in many countries, uh, which are FAO member countries. This year's theme, our actions are our future. Better production, better nutrition, a better environment, and a better life. The theme demands responsible smart and impactful actions that will guarantee the future we all want and we all deserve. So there's no better time than now to roll up your sleeves as young people and be part of this action. This continent of Africa is renowned for its abundant agricultural resources. Yet, as you know, it's the most food insecure, especially if you talk about Sub-Saharan Africa. The continent has the youngest population in the world. Yet the majority of these young people are unemployed. And many of those who are employed are in low paying jobs, largely in the informal sector. You all know that our rural areas will be the home to majority of African population over the next 20 years. And that's where agriculture is actually uh, concentrated, especially if you talk about production. So agriculture in rural areas, uh, as we talk, has uh, more than two thirds of young people which it employs in rural areas. Now through agriculture as young men and young women, you have a big role to play in ending hunger and in generating wealth. You can and you should be change agents in the way food is produced. You can and you should be the catalysts and actors in adding value to food products. You can and you should be the leaders in digital innovation. And you can and should be the providers of the essential agriculture or agribusiness services. If you talk about farming inputs, there are so many young people who are involved in providing and selling fertilizers or, uh, or chemicals or uh, uh, seeds uh, or, or, or even tools and implements. If you talk about transport and storage, so many young people are involved 
in transporting agricultural produce from rural areas to, to, to markets using motorcycles and sometimes using uh, vans and, and even hiring lorries. But they're also involved in the storage, all these logistical things. You can play a role in technical advice, in providing price information. You can and you should be the major influencers in making healthy food choices. You can and should be the main proponents for reducing wastage and loss of food at all stages of the food chain. You can and should show the positive examples of sustainable practices in taking care of mother nature, the environment. That way you will significantly contribute to reducing food deficits, you will contribute to better nutrition, economic development and environmental sustainability. Now, for us at FAO, we have been promoting youth employment in agriculture as a key priority of our work, especially on decent rural employment. In this work, we engage with government partners and provide assistance for them to set up and strengthen a conducive policy and institutional framework that will provide an enabling environment for young people to get employed, to become entrepreneurs in agriculture and to participate in agribusinesses. It, specifically, if we talk about Africa, in East Africa, FAO has assisted quite a number of countries uh, through their respective ministries of agriculture to develop national strategies in youth employment in agriculture. But we also conduct analysis on ongoing initiatives for boosting youth employment in agriculture. And we use those lessons for knowledge sharing, uh, for dissemination of good practices, for capacity development, and many other things. You probably heard about an initiative called the Youth Inspiring Youth in Agriculture. That was a FAO initiative launched some time back, and it's a basis on which FAO selects what we call youth champions. Now, we provide technical assistance as well and implement programs in the field to increase job creation among African youth, especially through on and off farm employment and self-employment opportunities. We also facilitate the growth of small and medium enterprises that involve young people in agricultural value chains. So we are beginning to see in many of the countries where FAO operates, an increase in e-commerce, uh, online digital marketing, which involves big sales of agro products, particularly in East and West Africa. Adding value to primary products to reduce post-harvest losses in many countries is also on the increase. But we're also seeing innovative ideas around alternative feeds, for example, for livestock, poultry, and other inputs in Rwanda and in Sierra Leone. As FAO, we work to better develop the potential of agroecology. This is one way that we foster what we call green business models. These green business models create opportunities for green jobs for young people. And many of the young people are involved in activities like organic farming, for example agroforestry, uh, aquaculture, or beekeeping, or ecotourism. And some are also involved in waste reduction and energy saving devices. You know, these are all green enterprises that attract profitable markets out there, which you need to take advantage of. Now we have developed also an extent portfolio of approaches and tools and knowledge because you see FAO is a knowledge organization. So we, we develop all these various tools to help countries uh, to apply them uh, so that they can be able to engage young people uh, more, more pro uh, profitably. And we have no doubt that as the population grows, uh, rises in many African countries, the demand for safe and quality food is also expanding. 
As more people move into urban areas with corresponding increase in income levels, new market opportunities are emerging for food items, especially those animal-based uh, foods like beef, eggs, fish, uh, but also cereals, fruits, and vegetables. This is a big opportunity for you to be part of the production, but also the supply chain and take advantage as you, you can uh, to employ yourselves. So my appeal to young people is organize. You have to organize yourselves so that you can be able to access uh, opportunities for training, opportunities to access capital so that you can start your small businesses or improve your businesses so that you can access markets. You can only do this if you are organized. If you work as individuals, it's very difficult that you can actually make headway. I also appeal to you to develop new skills, especially in areas of management, in entrepreneurship, digital innovation, artisanry. We have some gifted young people who are actually good at fabricating things. These are skills that you need to do because there are so many farm implements and tools that are required. But unless we have people to produce them, we can't have them. If you are there to produce them, then you can make money out of them. Of course, you need others to play their part. For us being United Nations, we engage a lot with the government, especially in urging them to provide a conducive policy and uh, regulatory environment for, for the private sector to thrive, to invest in agro industries, which industries will create jobs for, for young people like you. But also, they create markets for what you are producing so that you're able to sell your, your produce there that, that you're processing. But also that the government uh, sets in place proper rural infrastructure. As I said, much of the agriculture happens in rural areas. Unless you have good roads, you cannot move your produce from those rural areas to, to the markets. Unless you have electricity there in the rural areas, you cannot process some of your products that, in fact, would go bad within just a few days. So rural infrastructure is very important, and that's what we urge the government. We also engage with the private sector. We know that private sector is very good at doing things. The rapid development, for example, of ICT infrastructure for diffusion of digital technologies. This is private sector for you. They can do this very, very well. Guaranteeing markets for you, for your produce, that whatever you have and access to finance and technology. Private sector does that very well. So we believe that with the right support to young women and men, they would be a potent force for driving economic growth across the continent and alleviating food insecurity. Now, as we enter the decade of action uh, to achieve the sustainable development goals by 2030, you are our fresh hope for more efficient, inclusive, sustainable, and transformative agri-food systems. This can only happen when we all work together in partnership. When we work towards good governance that will open up inclusiveness in accessing opportunities, opportunities for education, opportunities for training and, and, and access to knowledge, both technical and, and vocational training, very important for young people opportunities to finance your enterprises, to access land for production, to access profitable markets, to innovate in this increasingly expanding digital space, as you know, but also for you to demand your participation in leadership at various levels so that your voices are heard when governments are making policy. This is very important and you have to assert yourselves because this is your time. And we urge all our partners, the governments and the private sector, as I have said, the UN and other development partners to reaffirm their commitments in harnessing the youth dividend because it's a big opportunity, especially where it comes to driving agri-food systems to deliver health diets, to contribute to economic prosperity, to ensure sustainable production and to protect the integrity of our natural ecosystems. I want to thank you so much and to wish you fruitful deliberations throughout the conference. I know that 
already you have started enjoying the richness um, that is coming out of the young people. And I believe that out of this conference, we'll be able to have um, you know, certain concrete issues that really, really you can get started with. Uh, FAO is on your side, or is willing and uh, available to uh, offer its support to you. And thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. Mr. Fred Caffaro, that brilliant one from Mr. Crawford Caffaro, the FAO representative of Nigeria. Thank you. So what are we going to tell Mr. Fred? Go to the chat box and just thank, type, type, type. What are you going to tell Mr. Fred now? We want to really see you. Your word for him. Thank you so much for your time. You know, you're a very busy man. You know, you've been supporting young people across. Why? Because we are building a model in Africa why parents who support their young people and seeing agriculture as the next gold mine, the diamond mine, what am I, what's running to? That's what we are presently working towards. Before you leave, sir. I would like to, I have two questions for you, which I want to, to answer before you, um, you take your exits, because we know you have a lot to do today. My first question to you is this, what do you have, how can you advise young people who sees crime as the only way knowing fully that the new sheriff, the new financial sheriff is in town, which is agriculture. That's my first question. And my second question is this, how can FAO come up with a, a program that will inspire parents to communicate concern and compound agriculture to their young ones? Over to you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> so the first question is basically around uh, uh, how to, 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 to show the opportunities that are available to young people so that they can be able to engage themselves more productively rather than go uh, uh, and, and get attracted into uh, insurgency. As far as I heard, that's the first question. Am I right? You are right. You're absolutely right. Okay. So, uh, as I said, there are so many opportunities. Quite frankly, uh, one of the challenges that normally arises with young people is for them uh, to view agriculture from a very narrow perspective, looking at agriculture as if it's only the activity of tilling the land and putting a seed and waiting for, I don't know how many months, depending on what you have grown for it to fruit. But I tell them that it's, it's beyond that. It, it's actually a long chain. And at each stage of that chain, there are so many opportunities that you can think about. And that's why uh, in my communication, when I, when I was talking about the different engagements. It could be that people are actually in their own areas are able, for example, to, to just to just see the opportunity of, 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 of collecting the produce that the, the other farmers who till the land have produced, aggregate that together and transport it to a market. Just that action of aggregating what others have produced and taking it to the market will give you an additional profit from what actually ideally you would get if you were just selling from the produce. And you can come in at just, just at that stage. You don't have even to go hold a hole and begin cultivating. No, you can come in at that stage where already the yield has been made. You aggregate it together, put it in bags, transport it to the market, sell it there, get your profit. There are other opportunities, of course, that, that uh, are, are also, I know one of the challenges that youth have is, is access to capital, for example, if they want to add value or to process something. 
But I've also seen young people who actually take some of these maize, for example, that has been produced to, to maize millers, to turn it into, into flour and, and sell that flour at a higher price. Or even then that flour will last longer uh, than probably the maize grains. I have seen young people who are engaging in fish farming because down where they are staying, there are all these uh, wetlands or, or areas where there's water that stagnates over time. And all they need is to get some fish fingerlings to put into their pond. And within no time, they have fish and they can sell that fish. So there are so many opportunities. Just, just to, to, to summarize, uh, please just watch out for all these opportunities in whatever situation that you are in, uh, depending on your environment. But look at those opportunities. Don't think about agriculture from just uh, an activity of growing seeds into, into the ground. It goes well, well beyond that. And, and I, I think that ties up also into the, the question that you had on how we can communicate to parents. I think this is the, 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 the challenge that parents have uh, sometimes to appreciate this whole value chain, that there are so many stages in this value chain that their children can actually, even young ones, young ones these days are very, very smart. For example, if you talk about the use of telephones, they are, they are very smart. They can pick out information about prices, for example, of different products from different areas. And, and they can concentrate just on that by providing price information at a fee. They can get that. They can as well play a role, as I said, in, in marketing, online marketing. They are very good in social media now. They use social media to be able to market the products that their parents are actually grow. So together, you can work with your, 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 your parents as children, but also parents can work with their children in marketing whatever they are, they, they are having. So this is what I can say for now. Sorry, you're muted. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. So my last question is this, you know, they said if there's going to be, a, if there's a challenge, we'll make the noise. And if there's no challenge, for what, do I'm, what am I trying to say? If someone did something that is awesome, we just make the noise a little bit. But if it's in the wrong way, the news spread like wildfire. So, but I just want to ask you to this and uh, this. Um, is there a way you can help commend parents who are encouraging their young ones in agriculture? Presently, maybe to you have a, a statement to salute the parents, to recognize the parents' effort so that thousands of parents will see that is true that this thing is really, really, really working. So from your office, in your capacity, in encouraging parents that are doing so, because I know every parent, um, like um, Mr. Tunde and uh, Bridget Eleshi now, they are a parent that is championing agriculture among their worlds. And those are the things I think, and I believe um, the leadership should actually look into. If parents could inspire their words into going to agriculture, I believe that should be a big deal. So in your capacity as a, um, the rest of the country rep of uh, FAO, is there something you can do to make it more loud and amplify it so that the world can definitely know that from parents to the peon, to their kids, this is the future. Agriculture, the next gold mine. Over to you, sir. Over to you, Mr. Fred. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think that that is a very good point that you are uh, raising. Actually, yeah. Uh, even for us, we believe that uh, spreading the news wider has a bigger impact uh, on, on, on society. Just to tell you, we have uh, some ongoing activities on, on school gardening. We call them school gardening activities uh, in five schools in, in Abuja. 
Now, just recently, actually, as part of the commemoration of the World Food Day, uh, we engaged with these schools. We've been working with them for quite a while, uh, but we wanted that um, as part of commemorating the World Food Day that we are able to bring these schools first and foremost to compete among themselves and the, 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 the good practices that they are doing uh, related to agriculture, but also uh, to, to show that the role of teachers in inculcating this spirit and knowledge uh, to young people related to agriculture is recognized. And then finally, of course, was the wider community, which involved also the parents uh, and, and local communities in the areas where these schools are located. And we organized a very uh, wonderful uh, event at one of the schools just last week where uh, the schools actually demonstrated what they have done practically in the field and in their gardens, shared with us the wonderful produce that they had brought out, but also indicated to us some of the issues and challenges that they have gone through. And many of them also indicating how their parents have been part and parcel uh, of, of the support that they have received. So, Yes, to answer your question, absolutely. We, we, would, we really appreciate very much uh, the role of parents and teachers uh, in this work. We would like this to spread even further. And in fact, we challenged both uh, the, the, the administrations of the FCT and also the ministry responsible for agriculture and rural development to, to take this beyond just these schools. Uh, so that as many as many schools can be engaged in these wonderful, um, you know, activities, but at the same time that we are able to drum up support using our own channels and, and media. FAO is a global organization, so when we share what we have done and, and 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 what parents say and what teachers say regarding school gardening, it goes well beyond uh, Nigeria, but globally. So yes, we want to share these wonderful uh, experiences and, and we are available and we, we are also open to, to any ideas that you may have uh, that we can work together to have this a reality. Uh, thank you for that last fact. You are also open to the ideas that we can make this a reality. I love that because the ideas, in fact, as you're just speaking, I'm just drawing up uh, something I'm going to send to SAC <laughs> a few minutes so that we can actually take it to the next level because I believe those roles, they have to be in all the schools so that young people can actually see that agriculture is the next gold mine. Thank you so much, Mr. Fred, for the wonderful opportunity. Before you leave, can I take a question from Aggie Dingby? One question from Caleb British and one question from Ojodu Junior Grammar School. Before you leave, sir, thank you. First of all, Agidengbe, are you set with your question? Thank you. Right, we are set. Are you set with your question, Agidengbe? You've got to unmute yourself so you can meet with the FAO Nigeria country rep, Nigeria rep, Mr. Fred Kaferu. Are you set? Okay. Good day, Mr. Fred Kaferu. Okay, so. All right, go ahead. So, so, I would like to ask you to encourage us to be who is a farmer. Just inspire us that a farmer is not just a work for the the 
Sorry, we can hear you. We can hear you. Sorry, we can hear you. Sir. So, 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 so when I so when I ask my parents who is a farmer, they told me a farmer is a person who feeds the nation. So, Mr. Fred Kaferu, I would like to ask you just to inspire us, us the youth, who is a farmer? Wow. Wow. Did I hear right? Who is a farmer? Was that the question? Right. Farmer was it? He said something to me. Okay, this one. Okay. All right. If you can hear, yeah, uh, can we pick uh, where they saw themselves out? Is it possible we have uh, Junior question now? Okay. Thank you. Is it possible we have question from Ojudu Junior Grammar School now? Oh, all right. Uh, it seems the technical issue is really, really affecting the network. Is affecting um, the whole uh, school. So, your final words, so that you can ask you your final words today. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I, I say hand raised, but I don't know whether that's a question or was that the original question they were raising? Okay, I think they are raising their hand. Let me just allow them here. Okay. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Ojodu Junior. Unmute yourself, please. Yeah. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Etienne Happiness. So I have a question to ask. I want to ask, is there any is there any special aspect in agriculture that maybe drive them young youth to like go into that aspect and like like the aspect is um, kind of different for the natural and um, normal agricultural stuff like planting and the rest. Is there any like we have engineers, we have a different aspect of engineers in agriculture? Do you, in agriculture, do you have this aspect that anyone, any youth, any Nigerian normal youth wants like? Going to the aspect. Sorry, thank you. Very interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, I think you you will you will uh, you will just summarize for me that question. It was a bit uh, uh, noisy here. I couldn't hear so much okay. what the young lady was saying. Okay, thank you so much. All she's asking of that, what are the robust aspects in agriculture that girl child can actually run with. Yeah, those are the things, the robust aspects in agriculture that the girl child can run with. That's the summary of our question. <laughs> robust <laughs> aspect in agriculture. Perhaps we, we take we take the other one and then I can respond and then conclude. Maybe that will be more efficient okay. use of the time. All right, sir. All right. Okay. Um I didn't give over to you your question now. Yes. Okay. 
Okay. I guess the network is. I said, I said when I asked my parents from time ago, they said, they said a farmer is a person that feeds a nation. So I would like to ask you, sir, Mr. Ka Mr. Fred, please. Is that statement correct, or will you have another one that will inspire us, the youths? Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Was that the last one? Okay. He said, is that statement correct, or do you have separate one that will inspire them, the youths, whether a farmer is the one that fits the nation, or is there a contrary opinion of yours that they can run with, especially for their age, which is uh, um, first generation digitalized age? Over to you, sir. Over to you. <laughs> I, I think it would be great that, that you, you actually characterized as someone who feeds the world, who, wow. who in this world doesn't eat. Everybody needs food. Everybody, regardless of whether you are young or old, or uh, everybody must eat and must eat every day. So if you were called a farmer who feeds the world, you must be very proud that your role is indispensable in this world, that without you, people will die because they cannot eat. So for me, I would be proud to be called a farmer if a farmer is the one who feeds the world. I think the other aspect related to that is, is increasingly what uh, the moderator has been talking about, that, that agriculture is actually a gold mine, whatever mineral you want to talk about. So if, if, you, if you see it as a mine, it ideally means that you have a lot of opportunities to actually generate money out of agriculture. And you can do that if you engage in a business that is related to agriculture, whether it's producing and selling, whether it's producing, turning into processed product and selling that processed product, then the, the, more, the more you add value, the more you earn money. So it's a gold mine in terms of uh, earning incomes. And, and for me, I really think that, uh, again, of course, the other aspect that you need to look at is if, when you talk about a farmer, you're also talking about uh, someone who is not only involved in crops, but is also involved in livestock. So a farmer is also one who looks after livestock for purposes of producing meat that you eat or milk that you drink and adding value to those products and selling those products to earn money for others to eat and consume, whether it as yogurt or sausages. So there are so many, many opportunities even around livestock. And these are all farmers. If, you, if you're talking about a farmer, you're also talking about an individual who is involved in, uh, for example, fishing activities catching fish, selling that fish, catching fish, drying that fish, and selling dried fish, and getting much more income from dried fish than the fresh fish. Or somebody who is actually growing fish through what we call fish farming. That's a farmer as well. So you, you have a farmer who is also involved in growing trees, for example. And in growing trees, you are raising nurseries, tree nurseries, where you get money and sell those, those small seedlings for money. Or you can actually grow those trees and they, 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 they produce fruit and you sell the fruit. Yeah, All does. those trees will, will, that will that. get timber and you sell the timber or poles. So there's so many opportunities uh, for, for income, but also opportunities uh, for, for, for food. And, and, and for me, I would therefore be proud to be called a farmer in that regard. Now, the first question I think was uh, looking at, yes, what, what is there for, for, for a girl child? What is there for a boy child 
is the same as there is for a girl child. Don't look at, at yourselves as girls and thinking that you don't have the same means and the same opportunities and the same capacities to engage in agriculture. What a boy does, a girl can do. Now, sometimes there, there are other opportunities, of course, that uh, uh, don't allow us uh, to, to get what we may want to, to get out of it. However, if you have access, if your parent, and this is why the parents are very important, if your parents encourage you and also give you some place where you can, for example, grow uh, your, your, your fruits or, or vegetables, and you sell those vegetables. That is the same opportunity that a young man may have because the parents have provided them with some land where they can grow uh, their fruits or vegetables for sale. So it's the issue is more about the opportunities that, that you have as a girl child to be able to move this, with the same opportunities as the male child. And this is where we need to keep engaging the parents to understand the importance of a girl uh, as part of the wider family and also as part of the a productive asset in the, in the home. So likewise, I think it's very important to know that if you actually can engage uh, in production, you can also engage in what we call agribusiness. So business that centers around agriculture. You can sell and you can buy and sell and get profits from whatever uh, that, that you are growing or that whatever others are growing for which you are helping them to, to access a market. So there are all these opportunities that are both for men and, and for, 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 for female uh, young people. Now, uh, as, as I said, moderator, you'll excuse me because I'm, I'm away in the field and, and there, there are quite a number of uh, engagements that I have this day, but I just want to conclude by thanking you, uh, all of you, and encouraging you to continue on this path. Uh, I think that we are doing great work uh, and we want to encourage you to continue on this great work. Uh, reach, us, reach up to us where you need our support. Uh, we are always available. I have already said that many times and I want to thank you very much. Thank you. I hope you, you can, so you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Thank you so much. Thank you for that awesome presentation and for showing up for young people in Nigeria to Africa. We're glad someone like you who still have fine time to attend the event and, and give wings to a lot of young people. Thank you so much. Over to you, Ron Tan is your turn now. Ron Tan from Singapore see some of the great things you've been doing. Over to you, I have the honor of introducing Ron Tan to everyone online to you. Ron Tan, it's your time now. Over to you, Mr. Ron Tan. Can you hear Okay, uh, good afternoon, uh, Nigeria. Uh, yeah. FAO representative, uh, the secretary of the youth, uh, do the dream uh, youth initiative. Thank you for the invitation. I'm greatly honored to be here. Basically, uh, I've, uh, I was at, at your conference uh, since you started about two hours ago. So uh, it's very interesting. And the students are very uh, clever in uh, learning how to plant cassava and, and maize. Some of them uh, use fertilizers. The other one they use uh, by, nature, uh, by natural means. Uh, so they're very good. So in short, my talk today is basically on uh, climate change, biodiversity, and why we should never use toxic chemical fertilizer for global agriculture. And uh, your conference is very timely because in about, uh, by the year 2030 or 2050, Nigeria will no longer be able to produce uh, fossil fuel under the COP convention because you are talking of net zero emission. So by 2030, you will scale down all your oil and gas export because of, of the carbon-based fuel. 
So they're going to change to all to renewable under the new COP26 uh, agreement. And also the recent uh, Kunming Biodiversity Conference calling uh, the world to cut down on carbon emission and also to protect and enhance and restore the biodiversity of air, land, soil, and water system. So Nigeria uh, has been uh, exporting uh, fossil fuel and gas over the last uh, several years or even uh, since the 1960 when, we, when you got your independence. Uh. So the global trend today gives Nigeria a very great opportunity to develop your agriculture to be the food basket of the world. But you need to use nature-based solution. That means uh, you cannot use the traditional way of using toxic chemical MPK fertilizer. What is MPK fertilizer? MPK is basically uh, uh, ammonia nitrate, phosphate, and potassium. So when you make ammonia nitrate, it's very carbon intensive and pollutive because ammonia nitrate is uh, synthesized from gas. So if you're talking about emission reduction, so you cannot use ammonia nitrate. And the other one, the other problem with ammonia nitrate is Ammonia nitrate is using made for bombs and bullets since World War I and World War II. And uh, these uh, green revolutions initiated through the using of uh, MPK fertilizer because the world was misled into believing that using MPK fertilizer, at that time they didn't know there were many uh, unintended consequences of using this toxic MPK fertilizer. What happens when you use MPK fertilizer is the ammonia nitrate and phosphate and the potassium, when you apply to the soil and, as, and, it, and uh, MPK is very soluble. So what happens is the ammonia nitrate and phosphate, uh, it leaks into the global water system. And what happens when you go into the water system, river, ocean, they create this algae bloom. And algae bloom, uh, from the algae bloom, what happens is, and through the photosynthesis pro process, the water system is deprived of oxygen. And what happens when there's no oxygen in water, all the marine organisms uh, will die off. And it perish there, and rots there, and... Uh, create uh, what they call uh, cyanobacteria and cyanotoxin. Uh, and it's very bad for human consumption. How can we human consume this cyanotoxin? Because through your fish in the water system, marine or organism, and also through the food system. So basically, MPK fertilizer have been proven throughout history and by science uh, that it is not necessary. When you grow agriculture, Similarly, when I saw one of your group of students that grow cassava by nature, no chem chemical fertilizer. The other one is you can use uh, organic fertilizer. That means uh, the nat natural one from the compost and manure. And these are the natural fertilizer. So the essence of uh, growing food agriculture is what is below the soil. It is the microbial family that survive and sustain in the soil that help to enhance your harvest and not the, chem the chemical fertilizer that we use today. What happens when you apply this chemical MPK? It destroys the soil, degrade the soil, and uh, you destroy all the microbial family in the soil. What you need is actually all the microbial fam family, the earthworm, the ants, the, the inside, the, 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 to sustain natural process of symbiotic relationship between photosynthesis and, and, and soil and uh, making use of the nitrogen that's available in the air, which is actually 79%. Most of the trees you see that grow to very big size uh, is because of the nitrogen in the air. How does the nitrogen get into the soil? The, the action is actually through all the microbial activity that, that have this symbiotic, that, that create the food system for the plant. And when the plant uh, grows big, then uh, you can uh, harvest all, all your fruits like coconut and all. Uh, it's, good, uh, it's a good example. So basically, you do not need toxic MPK fertilizer for any kind of food crop agriculture. 
because uh, it had been misled the world into using this chemical because of the Nobel Prize winning winner during World War II. After the war, the German they do not know what to do with all these uh, chemical plant and make, make ammonia nitrate. So one uh, wise guy, clever enough to, okay, so we can use it for to grow crop. It is true that uh, ammonia nitrate, phosphate, and potassium, they are part of the natural nutrient for crop. But uh, you can also get the same type of nutrient from nature by itself. Through That's why we call nature-based solution. And today, the current trend is uh, we must coexist with nature. At the same time, we need to protect the nature. That means by not destroying nature in terms of leaching chemical, dumping of waste into the water system, because it destroys the ecosystem, the ecology. And today, if you see around the world by satellite, they are every major river that exists on planet, they're all destroyed you know, through uh, leaching chemical and uh, fertilizer and dumping of waste, plastics, and, and all that. So unless we stop polluting the water system, uh, our global biodiversity system will not be able to restore. And also, uh, the UN has set a target of this uh, 1.5 degrees C. Then uh, we have another two major projects uh, that the UN is launching called the, the Decade of Restoration for Biodiversity. And another big project that's going on is uh, we need to protect the ocean by as much as 30% by the year 2030. That means uh, we need to conserve, protect, and, uh, and uh, help to re-restore the system. At the moment, our e ecology, biodiversity, biodiversity, they're all destroyed. The other thing is uh, talking of food security, safe food, nutritious food. You cannot have food security when you use toxic MPK fertilizer because MPK fertilizer destroy the ecosystem. So it's not possible to have a food security at the same time you use MPK fertilizer. The other one is uh, you cannot coexist uh, in, harm, uh, in harmony with nature if you use chemical to destroy the water system and destroy the soil. So there's no harmony. So the, the major thing that we have to do today is to ban all MPK fertilizer from production and for application. That is number one, the most important thing. Then you can restore your ocean, your water, your soil, and enhance your, your microbial activity in the soil. Today, we have no bees, no butterfly, no earthworm. How can you restore the eco, ecology and biodiversity if you have no butterfly, no earthworm, no no, uh, what I call the other important thing is bees. All the bees are, are killed by pesticide, you know. So unless we restore the, 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 the family of bees, the butterfly, the microbial activity under the soil, the earthworm, then uh, we can have a nature-based solution for a sustainable planet. Otherwise, we, the, the system is no longer sustainable. Everywhere is destroyed. You can see... Uh, the, the in northern Kenya, all the even there are two million population that's children and all that uh, they may die of starvation because for two years they got no rain, so the animal, the husbandry and all that uh, they are all actually dying away in Madagascar. There's no food, you know, so it's very sad. So uh, so what we need to do is stop using toxic MPK fertilizer. And the, the other reason that we have to stop is because uh, the emission from the agriculture sector, including using MPK fertilizer, comes to about 30 to 40% of the global emission. So if, if everyone stops use MPK fertilizer, you already mitigate the 30% of the emission problem around the world. But the trouble is all the policy maker and head of government, they are not, not, not taking this advice from the United Nations, like, F, like uh, UNDP, UNEP and, and all that. There are many reasons for this. The other one is uh, there's no political will. Another one is uh, there's a lot of corruption involved in the subsidy of, tox we call toxic subsidy. So the World Bank and FAO and all that are looking at how to get rid of all these toxic subsidy also for fossil fuel so that uh, we can use uh, lesser fossil fuel material Actually, MPK is from fossil fuel because it's synthesized from gas, the ammonia nitrate. 
phosphate is from the mining. When you mine phosphate anywhere in the world, all the water system and land is destroyed. The soil, the water is all completely destroyed. And uh, unless we stop the use of MPK fertilizer, there's no way we can achieve this 1.5 degree C and also complies with this the latest, uh, what they call the Kunming Biodiversity Declaration. So basically, uh, I think that's uh, all about, I have to say. And I'm very pleased that the, uh, the students that I've seen through, through uh, your conference uh, earlier, one of them uh, growing cassava by nature base. That's very, very good. So what I can advise them is try to apply some natural manure. You have a lot of manure in Nigeria, you know. You have a chicken manure, you got the goat, the cow. You can apply a little bit. You cannot apply too much of the manure. Because if the manure leaches into the water system, it does as bad. So you, you apply uh, sparingly. Then you, you'll find that you do not need MPK fertilizer. The other one uh, that uh, plant uh, some main siding, the other group of students, they use uh, fertilizer, but I'm not sure they are using the chemical one or the organic one. If you are using the compost one, it's very good by nature. But then uh, I will not encourage them to use any kind of chemical input into any soil because it be, it's very destructive to the soil. Okay, thank you. I, uh, I'm ready for some questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rontan, for that wonderful presentation. Now I've got to hear the MPK fertilizers destroy the soil. Awesome, awesome, awesome presentation. It's good to always have the knowledge, to always share so that people can know what is applicable in this time in order to have absolute and great food security. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm going to take one question from it. So one of the questions, I, I, I'm going to ask is um, I'm going to en uh, engage a Greek teacher in one of the school to to talk to you now. Um, Mr. Shokumbi is the Greek teacher in Ojudu Junior Grammar School. Can you hear me now, Mr. Shokumbi? Can you hear me? Is the Greek teacher? Um, I hear you, sir. Thank you. Wrong time. Just said we should not use. MPK fertilizer that we should go for nature-based manure. What's your take on that? Thank you very much, Mr. Limadewa, and all guests on the on the on online. I want to appreciate you for giving me this opportunity. Actually, natural is the best because it has a minimal chemical. Because using of chemical like MPK and others, high is a high risk to the fact the edge of citizen. So those natural ones like farmyard manure, compost manure, and green manure, the makings of grasses and other uh, manure is the best because those ones are natural. Because those grasses, when you bury them for some weeks. It will turn to natural fertilizer. Also, when you make use of the animal dung as well, mostly goat dung is the best. It has high nutrient compared to all other uh, nutrients, all other animals. So when you make use of those one, you will, you will get the best out of your crops. So uh, I got, but in the world, worldwide, generally, the preferred use of fertilizer, the chemical one. Because, especially in Lagos, for example, most of those things we mature very well, but the nutrient in the crops has been what deteriorated. So they may have enough bigger output, but for us, what, what, we, may, what we need majorly in agriculture is the nutrient, nutrient content. What will you gain when you eat watermelon? That's little or no nutrient because they make use of what chemical. But if it's been done naturally, the use of natural manure, it may be small, but rich in nutrients. So I will employ those of us online presently and harder worldwide that the best way to, to make use of, uh, to improve or to increase the output of agriculture is the make use of natural fertilizer. The word, the farmyard manure, the compost and the green manure. Thank you very much, sir. Awesome. Thank you. 
Brilliant one from Mr. Shokumi, wrong time. You had one of the teachers talk. What can you say with what you just heard now? You see, the, 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 what the, you say is correct. You shouldn't use the chemical. You, you see, this chemical-based uh, fertilizer destroy the microbial family in the soil. What you need is actually the microbial family in the soil that uh, can provide the symbiotic relationship for photosynthesis and water and sunlight to take place so that uh, the photosynthesis can, can uh, generate the starch uh, for the soil, for the what they call the microbial family under the soil. At the same time, the microbial family can break down all the natural nutrients, the element in the soil. Okay, so you need manganese, you, you, you need potassium, you need uh, for nitrate, phosphate, and uh, sodium, uh, mogadinium and all that. So what you actually need uh, is uh, the natural 11 element to grow any crop, okay? As long as uh, the natural el el element or nutrients, uh, 11, uh, the present in the soil, but you need the microbial family to break them down. Only the microbial family that can break down this uh, natural nutrient, is actually mineral based. So you do not need MPK actually. And the nitrogen uh, to make uh, nitrate is actually come from the air. And uh, you have talking about the nitrogen is available 79% from the whole, whole uh, planet Earth. So you're plenty uh, full of nitrogen to supply the global agriculture system many, many times over without using even a gram of uh, MPK. No need. So this is called nature-based solution. The MPK history started in the 1960s. They called the Green Revolution. At that time, the Nobel Prize winner from Germany actually uh, misled the world that uh, we need uh, this chemical to grow uh, for to feed the global exploding population. So, but uh, at that time, they know the science behind it, that, that the unintended consequences. And because they want to make money, they never tell the truth. They tell, tell the world the half truth. And today, the result is that there's a soil degradation, de what we call uh, de all the arable land become desert, all because of using toxic MPK. MPK is actually a global disaster and it must be stopped. You know, Sri Lanka has officially banned the importation of this chemical fertilizer and also the pesticide. Because when you apply the pesticide and it kills the bee, the butterfly, the ants, the, uh, all the microbial family, especially, they are very important in the soil system. The soil is actually a living organism. Living organism, that means uh, it uh, breathes, it consumes food, consumes water. At the same time, it produces certain uh, material uh, and uh, what I call uh, the mycorrhizal and uh, to help sustain the whole global ecology. It's a two-way, you know? It feed the plant, it, it, I mean, it, it feed the plant at the same time, it feed the soil. So it's by nature. So that's why there's such a thing as photosynthesis. Photosynthesis, you need carbon dioxide. At the same time, it gives out oxygen. So it's a two-way, you see, on, for the natural ecology to sustain. So it's actually a kind of cycle, but at the, when you use MPK fertilizer, we are breaking the natural cycle. At the moment, the natural cycle is not complete because of this gap of MPK fertilizer. It's a global disaster, actually. So you can use manual, but use spare, sparingly because too much manual, it goes to the water system, it's just as bad. So all the any kind of uh, agriculture, you can use manual sparingly because after you use a, a couple of times, the system... Uh, is self-generating. So they call regenerative agriculture. So regenerative agriculture and uh, coexistence in harmony, they are all coherent, chemical-free. That is the way to grow agriculture in Nigeria. Because otherwise, you destroy all the land, the pollution is very, very bad, including the air. Actually, MPK destroyed three things. No? Destroy the air, polluting the air, destroy the water system, destroy the soil. And I, if the ammonia nitrate goes to your borehole or potholes, uh, then you go and suck the, wa the water there, 
you are taking ammonia nitrate and it's very toxic no and uh, and you will destroy your liver your 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 your, your brain even no from the cyanobacteria okay have i answered your question thank you thank you long term that, that's a beautiful one um, do you have a question, the student? Do you have a question you'd like to ask Ron Tan? Agidinvi, do you have a question for Ron Tan before you take it? Okay. Do you have a question for Ron Tan as well? Thank you so much, Ron Tan, for that awesome presentation. You say thank you. Um, your final word tonight, your final word this day, Ron Tan, your final word. For all the still, still students in the 10 or 20 years time, when Nigeria can no longer produce uh, oil and gas under the new COP26 agreement, 2030 or 2040, 2050, you got to phase out all your gas and oil exploration and uh, focus on renewable e e energy. So agriculture will be the gold mine to substitute your major export. You can be the food basket of the world, but Without MPK for food security, nutritious food, and safe food. Every time we talk of food security, if you use MPK, there's no food security. Because uh, it's a when when you use MPK actually your harvest is very to toxic, no? Because of the heavy metal present in your harvest. Let's say your 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 cocoa you want to export to Switzerland, it's very bad. Your cassava. Uh, actually, cassava is used for making uh, what they call a uh, tablet for fever, what they call a uh, panadol. No? So if you contain toxic material, how can you use your cassava? You, you, you see the problem? So it must be MPK free and by nature based. So by nature based, you have a lot of raw material in Nigeria. You've got a lot of uh, cow, goat, all the chicken farm, the duck farm, whatever farm you have. You can make use of the manual, yeah. Also, a lot of compost, and you will not destroy your aquaculture a bit. Nigeria is trying to grow your agriculture, what called the aquaculture. That means you grow fish in the river or ocean. I mean, uh, the coastal ocean. But then, if you use MPK, the chemical will leach into your water system and destroy all your fishes. How can you have aquaculture? Not possible. I've been trying to talk to uh, all your, gov your government people, your gov governor, but they, they are all, all not listening. So uh, it will take a bit of time. And hopefully, there are two industries that uh, Nigeria can uh, tra transform uh, to replace the fossil fuel. That is land agriculture and your aquaculture. Because you have a lot of water system, you are cold, you've got a big coast, and you can uh, have a huge aquaculture industry to grow fish, to feed the world. As of what the FAO officer say, you can uh, have fish, fishery industry, prawn industry, besides the animal husbandry, and also the, the crop agriculture. So you got three actually. You got animal husbandry, you got the marine agriculture, that is fish, prawns, cuttlefish. The other one is the, 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 the land-based. Land based are your cassava, your tomato, you know, your rice and 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 all that. But it has to be nature based. No MPK, please. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I getting with you have a question for Ron Tan. I getting with you have a question for Ron Tan. Oh, I think there's still one question for you. Hello? Hello, okay. Someone is raising his hand. Yes, Mr. Adewa. Please. Go ahead. Speak up now. Someone to ask a question. How can we differentiate between crops that are, that they use natural, um, but like, Natural fertilizers from crops that they use MK fertilizers for. You 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 see for any harvest, uh, they can ascend the soil, number one, the soil to lab test. From the soil, they can tell whether it's contained a lot of MPK or not, lab test. 
Then from the harvest, uh, they can also test uh, whether uh, the cassava or the banana contain any toxic material with the lab test. So sorry, sir. It's our own time. Got it. Yes, what, go ahead. You say as me when you go to the market, how how can you differentiate those one in the market? Those one that are fertilizer based, those are natural based in the market. In the market. No, if if you want to know whether where, whether the banana or cassava is uh, grown by NPK or by nature based, you can send to a lab test. From the from the lab test, they can extract the the mineral content and uh, measure it at the lab whether whether it exceeds certain limit or not. Then they can tell whether it's a chemical base and whether their toxicity or or not from the lab. It can be done. They have to send to the lab. They can also send the soil to the lab. You you get me? So they will know whether whether this one is uh, by nature or by MPK. Because by MPK, they're all chemical. You I can name uh, they are all ammonia nitrate, phosphate, potassium. Potassium actually is not so bad. The worst chemical are there, this ammonia nitrate, and the other one is a phosphate. This two is actually a global disaster for water system, for soil, and very toxic. No, the the nitrate is very, very toxic, actually. Okay? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you so much, Rontan, for that awesome one. Thank you. Grateful for your time. We're grateful for what you've done today. But thank you for your time. And to find out from Agidindi, do you have a question for Rontan? <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. Your final word, Rontan, so that we can move to the next thing. Your final word today. So the the, the for the student, uh, your, what you have done is very good. So you 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 should try and scale up. Then uh, if you can uh, sell your produce at the market, market is, is uh, you will bring it to the market and sell. I mean, uh, uh, in small quantity, then you, you, you can uh, learn from ex experience. And uh, when you graduate from school, you can scale up, you know, on a commercial scale. So the other thing is uh, MPK is irrelevant for any food crop agriculture. You can use nature based as long as you have manual, uh, you can uh, start growing anything by nature. But of course, you need sunlight and water. Uh. I mean, if, if you've got no water, then uh, it's, uh, it's uh, not possible. Okay, and uh, no salt Thank water. You so much, for sir. the moment, no salt water. Uh. Okay, okay. I, I think I can see a hand from another school. Let me just bring them in. So we can wrap this up. Okay, you are here. Agiding me. I can see you raising your hands. So what do you have for us? Agi, what do you have for the team? Agiding me, over to you. Unmute yourself. Fire on. Let's hear you. Thank you. Hello, Can you hear me? Go ahead, Queen. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Speak. Okay, I have a question. My Go name ahead. is Miss from Junior Grammar School. So I was told by the facilitator that NK have effects, negative effects. But then with my farm have a fertilizer. So what negative effects of fertilizer? Wow. Sorry, we can't, can't hear properly. We can't hear properly. Sorry, you've got to repeat yourself. <laughs> Can you repeat yourself, please? Okay, if I don't educate that Liza, have on cross. Yeah. 
Please type. Please can you type it? The line is very bad. Please can you type to Please can you type it? Can you hear me? Yes. You can right. hear me. Yes, I All right. Hear. I said I have a farm and that it is use MPK fertilizer. So the fact that all good on crops. So I want to know what effect does it have on crops? No, are you saying uh what does MPK do to crop? Is it? Is that the question? Yeah, the negative effect. So I can stop because I have a farm and I do use MPK fertilizer on it. No, you should not use MPK because MPK first is toxic. Second, it kills the microbial uh, family in, in your soil. Understand? And also very toxic. So what you should do is uh, use natural compost. It's, it's better. Natural compost or manure. Even uh, from the poultry, goat, buffalo, whatever. You have a lot of... Uh, it's better. Or natural compost. Okay. okay, no problem. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that wonderful question and that wonderful answer. Thank you so much. Run time, we're grateful. How do are we taking another question from Agidingbi? Are we having another question from you? Hello. Okay, thank you, so thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, okay, thank you, Ron Tan, for your time. We're gonna get across to you and see how we're gonna continue this event offline. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very so much. much. Uh, and, uh, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. So we keep in touch over the email and can. Okay. All right. Bye -bye. All right. Bye bye. Thank you, wrong time. I don't think bye bye to well. our students. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. We're glad this is fast spent. We have a few minutes to spend here. I think from now we'll be going to Caleb for food exhibition. If it is, if they are here now, Caleb for food exhibition. for food exhibition and I want to thank all the participants from Ojodu Junior Grammar School. Thank you for logging in again with Junior Grammar School. Thank you for logging in. Now I can tell you directly by the Director General of FAO and FAO stands for Food Agriculture Organization of United Nations is aware of what you are doing and you'll be getting across to you. So, yeah, do the dream. So some of your students should prepare themselves because there's gonna be a beautiful surprise in this part of the world. What some, what some of you have been doing in agriculture. So we'll, we'll go straight to Caleb University. After Caleb, we'll say thank you to everybody and we're done today. Just a few minutes. I want to thank the principal of Ojojo Junior Grammar School. I want to thank the principal of Agitin Junior Grammar School for giving us opportunity to explore the beauty of their farm, STEM farm as well, in those beautiful schools. Wanna thank everybody for your time. Wanna thank everyone for making today a success. Wanna thank the God of the dream. I wanna thank the Honorable Minister of Agriculture, Federal Republic of Nigeria. You've just seen your mail and we understand. And we also want to thank those who are in traffic, who are unable to get to their 
destination because um, they want to attend this and be part of the being held in the hold up. We know one of the thank you to every one of you. Thank you. So, and on this note, we've come to the end of today's event. 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 A final word from Ojodu Jr., your last words today. I will take the last word from Agidengi. One from the student, one from the teacher. One from the student, one from the teacher. So we are starting with Ojodu Jr., final word from you today. Thank you. My name is Afinet. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Afinet. It's Enjoy Afinet from Ojodo Junior Grammar School, Lagos, Nigeria. So on behalf of um, the principal, the vice principal, and the entire students of Ojodo Junior Grammar School, we say a very big, very big thank you to F F A F O F F A O. Thank you very much. So on the, on the count of three, I'm going to give you guys a round of applause. So wow. one, two, three, go. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Okay. Bye. 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 Thank you very much for the wonderful presentation given to us this, today. We appreciate God for this. Also, we appreciate you. Do the dream. You have been so wonderful. Because I, I, I couldn't recollect where we started. Uh, we only really God we can appreciate you because you've been performing wonder nationwide and international wide. I also want to appreciate the FAO for the presentation today. In fact, my students have been rising in the aspect of agriculture today from what you have said now. And I'm promising you that we continue to do more and more because as you say, that today's children and leaders of tomorrow, as you know, he said, no farmer, no nation. Because agriculture is the lifeblood of everybody in the world dependent on agriculture. Thank you very much, sir. Hey, thank you, sir. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. You guys are wonderful as well. Okay, we go to Agiding B to turn now. Okay. Agiding B. Good day, sir. My name is Alabama. I want to say a very good thank you on behalf of the principal, the teachers, with the students. So thank you very much, sir. We are great. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 to everyone on behalf of the principal, the vice principal and all the students and teachers we say a very big thank you to everyone of you we hope that the program will continue and thank you all god bless you and we pray that all that we've learned we are going to put into practice and god will give us strength also to be able to what to teach the children the students to work god bless everyone of you thank you so much thank you thank you god bless you thank you so we're going to be coming to some of your school. So practice what you learn today. Thank you. And God bless you all. Bye.